think it was an attempt from Michelle Moan to say, OK, I'm going to come clean and try and persuade the public that I didn't do anything too bad. Did she convince you, anyone? She convinced me uh, that she's an absolutely ghastly specimen, I've got to say. <laughs> uh, brass necked, as someone put it. And more than that, managed, I think, um, and this is the problem the Conservative Party have, she managed to encapsulate what an awful lot of people think is the Conservative Party, which is a bunch of brass necked um, people from uh, poshish backgrounds on the make um, and who don't give a monkeys about other people and who have no moral compass. Uh, I mean, obviously, she should go from their House of Lords, obviously. Uh, the Conservative Party, uh, she, she resigned from, I believe, uh, or at least resigned temporarily. But she should never have been taken on. This is a woman who was ennobled after she'd been peddling these diet pills, which were of extremely questionable efficacy. Uh, and, you know, the MedPro stuff is remarkable. It's not merely that she lobbied on behalf of MedPro. It's that she kind of, with her friends, created MedPro in order to trouser up vast amounts of money from the public. It's a remarkable story. I mean, Rod, Roger, you, there are a couple of points in there. Firstly, using that VIP lane, I think it brings yeah. the entire system into disrepute. I agree wholeheartedly with you on yeah. that. But the, the, the issue about PP is a really good one. Why on earth were we in the position where ministers were basically asking their mates to try and uh, phone round, find people to make PPE? Oh, by the way, my mate can make some PPE for you. My yeah. friends and colleagues in hospitals were making do with what they had. Do you remember back? People were making their own PPE at home, which yes, clearly right. didn't work. Yeah, well, <laughs> but nor, as it, as it turns out, did MedPros, uh, uh, which is why there's now a... Uh, legal action between the government and and MedPro and Michelle Moan over the uh, over the various dressing gowns, which which did not meet what the contract stipulated according to the government, not according to MedPro, of course. Uh, but it's it's also difficult to to understand why you would need to to hive that out to uh, a, a, the private a, a private company when it really was a simple case of ringing someone in China and saying, make these now. Uh, why could not someone, is, is there no way that we can do that ourselves as a government? I'm sure a Labour Party would do that, uh, but, but we, we seem to have would got they, out they, of the they, they, why, why, why is that party political? Surely, surely. This, for me, is about pandemic preparedness, and that is cross-party, cross-governmental. We simply aren't prepared for the next pandemic, which could appear next week. It reeks of the Conservative Party. I'm sorry, whatever way you cut it, the idea of giving vast amounts of money to your mates is something which, is, which has been uh, alleged about the Conservative Party for decades. When you, read the, when, when you read people commenting online, they're hiving off the National Health Service to their mates. And we all object to that. We all say, look, it's not quite as simple as that. Well, here's a case where it is precisely as simple as that. That's exactly what they, what they were doing. They were hiving off uh, lucrative contracts to their mates. Uh, well, I think and we could just... If we remember at the time, I mean, I was working in France and reporting across yeah. Europe at the time about the absolute scramble. Every single yeah. wealthy country, as well as those that didn't have the finances, were going through to try and basically secure this type of stuff. It wasn't as simple as you've just said, as, oh, we'll just call China and they, they can make it for us. Is there an argument, I'm not defending Michelle Moan here, that if government ministers have got contacts with people in this VIP lane, which meant we were going to be able to secure equipment pretty quickly, that that... that channel should have been used, it just wasn't used properly. Yes, I think that's entirely possible. If that's entirely possible. But you look at the profits which MedPro made and which which uh, eventually uh, Michelle Moan has now agreed she made out of it, uh, you know, the 60 million quid. And you think that this is, this is an obscenity mm. uh, when people are hard up, when there's uh, a, a pretty much a credit crunch when people are uh, don't have much money at all when they're confined to their homes to see someone it, it, it immediately brings back that 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 uh, trope which was common throughout covid 
of the government doing one thing uh, whilst telling the country to do it. Do, do, do you else. know one thing, Rod, for me? Yeah. What, what really sticks in my throat here is they made a profit out of human adversity. If yes, we that's think, right. If we think yeah. back to what we did to people, where elderly yeah. people died, they were frightened, they were alone, they were isolated, we left medical professionals with absolutely no cover, they didn't have the right equipment, we were, as Rosie says quite rightly, we were in a global scramble for PPE, and at the end of the day, to make 20, uh, sorry, 60 million quid off the back yeah. of it, just, I think, is pretty abhorrent. Well, it's that moral compass issue again, isn't it? And and it's it's there in what Michelle Moen said to uh, uh, to Laura Koonsberg, which was about it's not a crime to lie. Well, it kind of is. Uh, it's certainly a moral crime to lie, and it's a moral crime to lie about something which which is so important and 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 which brings disgrace upon her and upon the party she represents.